Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. As you can see, you click the video, you click the thumbnail. We are going to be making Buttercup from the Powerpuff Girls. Finally! I know this has been such a long time as well. But I'm really, really excited to make the toughest spider out of all the three of them. Now because the Powerpuff Girls essentially are triplets, I knew even when I was making Blossom that their uniforms and their looks will essentially be the same in terms of the leotard, the skirt maybe, and especially the shoes. I knew all of that were all going to be the same and that's why I kind of took some time and really wanted to think about design aspects but essentially I really wanted to have a uniform Powerpuff Girls. I wanted them to be very cohesive. Obviously they would have their own little quirks here and there, different colors, but I also want their personality to show through their faces. Now that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So you guys already know I'm actually using the G doll from the Kuku Harajuku Girl doll line. It is well established that that is the line I'm using for all the Powerpuff Girls and this one in specific is actually the G doll. I have already removed her hair and now it's time to remove her factory paint with acetone. As usual, I have listed all of the materials down below for your reference. I then do a coat of water to make sure there's no leftover residue. After all of that is done, I primed her face with Mr. Super Clear to protect the vinyl and give it the tooth texture that we need for the pencils. Let's go and give Buttercup a fierce face, which I feel like I always do anyway. <laughs> I start sketching her main features like her eyes, her eyebrows, and also her lips. I'm definitely working with the mold of her face, since sometimes certain eye styles won't work with all the face molds. So really, it's all about trial and error. I also gave her an eyebrow slit, which I always rock in real life, just to give her a rougher, edgier look since she is the bravest and toughest of all of them. And now it's time to add some color! Like what I did for Blossom, I really wanted her eyes to look like it's almost glowing without using glow-in-the-dark paints because those really don't do anything in terms of camera footage and stuff. So I really just wanted to play around with different shades of green. So I added some lime in there, some hunter green, and I just kind of play around with vibrancy and the gradiency of her eyes. Buttercup is usually always mad or is usually frowning, so I wanted to mirror that with this doll as well. As you can see, I did tilt her eyebrows down a lot so that you can really see the expression, and then I also exaggerated her lips to be frowning. And now it's time for my favorite part. I feel like this is like my version of ASMR, but it's like visual. Just filling her eyeliner and also her pupil with black is like, ooh, it, it gives me tingles, you know? It's so satisfying. <laughs> I'm not drawing or giving Buttercup any 3D lashes, just because she is the tomboy of the group, but I did want to give her a little something something just to mirror with Blossom too. Now I really wanted to push Buttercup to look tough and that she's always fighting because that is her nature and I was really inspired by the Matroshka song by Gumi and Miku from Vocaloid where they have like, not band-aids, but they have like, the entire color scheme is very neon and they have like face paint on it and I really kind of wanted to do that but... I don't know, the face I gave her just did not work out. I had to reject the idea. It was cute in my head. <laughs> now in the original cartoon, they all had purple eyelids anyway, but as you can see, I did not give Buttercup a defined eyelid line, but I still wanted to give her the eyeshadow just so that she matches Blossom and also Bubbles in the future but um, I did pastels for it so that it's a lot softer and more subtle. Mm -hmm. 
Now, even though I loved Blossom, personally, she was my favorite, I related so much with Buttercup growing up. I don't know, it's just, she was so relatable when she was kind of selling her teeth to the Tooth Fairy and she kept breaking her sister's teeth to get more money. I'm like, that is the most relatable thing ever. <laughs> I moved on to acrylic paint for her iris and also her sclera just to make them a lot brighter and more opaque. Then I start darkening her eyebrows but I give it a more ombre look so it's really 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 dark at the tail but very light in the middle. I also wanted to highlight her cubist bow just to give it more of a three-dimensional look. The pastels alone translated more pink, so right here I'm using pencils just to give it more of a purple hue. And now it's time to add the catch lights, which is very very vital to any Powerpuff girl, you know? So first I'm using color pencils just so that it's easier to erase if I make any mistakes and then when I'm happy with it, I go with my acrylic paint. I'm going to give Buttercup stars as a signature thing for her eyes. I gave Blossom heart for her eyes and I thought stars would be so cool for Buttercup because when she punches, she sees the stars, you know? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and then to finish it off, I'm gonna go ahead and give her some gloss for her lips. And now we are done with Buttercup's face. She looks amazing and really, really cool, in my opinion. Um, but let's go ahead and move on to her body. So as usual, I'm actually going to sand off her molded underwear just so we can have a seamless and clean canvas to work with. She's gonna have the same exact android feet that I gave Blossom and for that to start with I use an air dry clay just to give it some volume and some mass and then I move on to my epoxy sculpt to give it the details. You don't want to use epoxy sculpt for the entire thing because that is completely wasteful. Epoxy sculpt is very expensive and air dry clay is very affordable so you'd rather want to build the mass and the volume with paper clay or air dry clay and then to seal everything as a top layer I use the epoxy sculpt. So this is the layer that you want to blend in with the skin as much as possible. You want it to be smooth as much as possible. And this is where you sculpt the details that her feet's gonna have. Now I'm very very particular when it comes to getting things symmetrical. So for the orb thingy on their angles, I'm actually going to make a mold out of it using this easy mold silicone thing um, I got from Michaels. And it is a two-part mold putty. You just mix two equal parts together until it reaches one color, which is still purple. And you just place that or press it against whatever you want to get a mold out of. And you just wait for it to dry. I think it's like 30 minutes. It's very, very quick. So you kind of have to act fast as well. And then there you have it. It's very hard. It's very rubbery, very flexible. So I'm just pressing the epoxy sculpt on it just so we can get the same exact measurement. And I just make two of them so we can place it on Buttercup's ankle. And to stick it together, I actually did not use glue. I used epoxy sculpt as well, just a little bit, just because I think that it is a lot stronger than glue. And while that's drying, let's go ahead and move on to hair for now. And if you are new to my channel, hello, welcome. I usually use yarn to make um, hair for my dolls just because it has so much color. It's very affordable, although it does take a lot of work. And as you can see, I use pet brushes to untangle and release the tension from all of the yarn and this will make it really really fluffy and malleable and then when we get to the really fluffy stage i use my hair straightener to create the hair wefts and here we have it so satisfying so cute but of course i prepared black for buttercup <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I protected her face with saran wrap and let's go ahead and place the wig cap on her and let's start gluing the hair wefts. This can get messy sometimes but you just gotta plan it out and be confident with it and just go with it. Um, also, some good tip is to make more hair wefts than you think you would need because sometimes, especially for the Kuku Harajuku girls, they need a lot of hair wefts. It's crazy. Like, it's insane. <laughs> <clears throat> um, so let's go ahead and actually trim her hair and style it so she looks less like the grudge and more like Buttercup. When I trimmed her bangs and I was trimming the side bangs, I thought she looked really, really cute. She actually looks like Jade from Bratz. Oh, you know what? She looks like those baby Bratz. Yes, I love it. Yes. So this isn't actually the final styling, I'm just editing it and cutting loose ends just to make it perfect as much as possible and we will do a final styling later on. Let's go ahead and work on her outfit. So like I did for Blossom, I am painting her bodysuit on her so that it looks seamless and sleek and futuristic. And I use really really lime green. It looks neon in some lighting, but I think technically it is lime green. And I'm also painting her entire leg white. And this took a lot of layers. I think it had to be like five layers for the entire thing to look seamless. For the gradient, I started with black acrylic paint in the very bottom and then I sprayed it with Mr. Super Clear a lot of times and I am going to layer and layer and layer and layer black pastels to create the gradient from white to black. I do believe that it took less than 10 sprays to create the gradiency. It's not bad, but it does take a long time because you gotta have to wait for it to dry also. So just the drying time sucks. <laughs> and then for the sock area, I'm just painting that white. For the orb, I'm using the same exact green to match her bodysuit and I'm just being very very careful not to ruin the gradiency. And mixing some white with the same exact green, I just created a really really lighter version of it just to have some, you know, just to be a little different, you know. And then I added the catch lights and the shine with white. To add some shine, I'm using Liquitex Gloss Varnish and I'm going to paint her entire legs and also her bodysuit to really give that futuristic 1950s future look that I gave a Blossom as well. I It's just really fascinating actually, especially the gradient part, to have it look glossy and shiny. I don't know, it's weird. It's very it's cool. It's very cool. Like look at that. That is so cool. For her skirt and accessories, I'm using this green transparent PVC vinyl. I just took a quarter and I traced it to create a perfect circle for her bracelet. And as you can see, obviously I'm cutting two of them. To save some time, we just double it up. And then we place it around her wrist. I know that this was also included in Blossom's art sketch, but for some reason at that time I didn't feel like giving it to her. So I think for the entire Powerpuff Girls, I'll just create different variations for the three of them. Then for her skirt, I measured a sauce lid. I think it is a perfect measurement for the skirt. I thought of making a different type of skirt, maybe not like a round one, and I did do some trial and error, but I still wanted to stick with the round skirt just so that it really mirrors and uniforms with Blossom. Then let's go give her the signature belt and also, as an added touch, a choker. 
For her earrings, I'm taking this fake pearl earrings and I'm just painting it with the same exact green and I glossed it up as well and it looks really cool. It's pretty big. It's bigger than Blossom's but I love it. Now let's put back her wig and do the final styling. I wanted her hair to flare out a little bit, just kind of how I did for the drawing. And now we're done with our toughest fighter. Sugar. Sugar. Spice. Spice. And lots of doll supplies. These were the ingredients chosen to create the perfect little girl. 